Welcome to As I Live and Grieve, a podcast that tells the truth about how hard this is. We're glad you joined us today. We know how hard it is to lose someone you love and how well-intentioned friends and family try so hard to comfort us. We created this podcast to provide you with comfort, knowledge, and support. We are grief advocates, not professionals, not licensed therapists. We are you. Hi, everyone, and welcome back today to As I Live and Grieve. We have a returning guest, one of our favorites, and I can tell by all the statistics out there about our downloads and everything like that, that she's also one of your favorites. So welcome back today to Ada Mae Brown. Hey, Kathy. Hello, everyone. It's Ada, and I'm a psychic medium. I've been a professional psychic medium now for almost 20 years, and I'm looking forward to today's show. Great, great. I love our shows because a lot of times we start out with a specific topic in mind and just who knows what we're going to cover. And I just love these conversations. And in fact, that's what we really want everybody to be able to do is to sit down and have just very comfortable, ordinary conversations about death and any part of death, grief, the afterlife, any part of it that you want to talk about. A lot of times I find topics, or Stephanie finds topics, by reading posts and comments in the myriad of Facebook groups and pages that I belong to about grieving. And many of them, it seems to me that there are a lot of comments, specifically in the ones that relate to spousal loss, not that that's significant or anything. But lately, I've been seeing a lot of posts from people about signs and, oh, I saw a sign or I got a sign or someone else will say, I, you know, I'm really upset because people are talking about signs and I don't have any. Now, Ada, I read somewhere that signs are a little easier to spot if you yourself has a higher level of intuition or you're a little bit more sensitive or intuitive. I looked up the definition of intuition, and I'm just going to kind of summarize it by almost that gut feeling that we get, that sense, really without explanation, but the sense that we either feel something, hear something, or are just aware of something. So let's start out with that. Is that what intuition means? Generally, overall, as wide a definition as you can give, yes. There are actually four, some people say five, abilities that fit in the intuition folder, if you will. Okay? Okay. The first one is clairsentience or clear feeling. That's your empathy. Okay. And it can be like mine is I can walk into a building that's 200 years old and want to walk right back out because something oh. didn't really jive. It wasn't really great in there. At one point. That actually happened to me once in Haight Asbury. Mm -hmm. I went into a store actually that sold crystals and dream catchers and all you know a lot of different things. And I walked in, I took two steps in, and I had to turn and leave. I just felt so intensely uncomfortable. Mm -hmm. And I even tried it a second time and got the same feeling on a different day. Many many years ago, there was a store in Knoxville in what used to be called East Town Mall. And if any of you who are from East Tennessee, you'll know exactly where I'm talking about. But East Town Mall had a store called Crystal Visions. And I had written out a prayer for direction because I really didn't want to have a swimming pool business anymore. It was very hard work, but it was good that I could take my girls with me. And I was put into God worked his magic into a store called Crystal Visions. And the energy was so intense. I kept getting migraines. The mm -hmm. energy made me want to run out. I had to take frequent breaks outside and act like I was tidying up a window or something outside because it was just too much. Everything wasn't lined up right. Mm -hmm. Everything wasn't lined up to let the energy flow. And there were a lot of mirrors and we all have to make money. Please don't get me wrong. I mean, that's what we live off of in our world. We don't live off seashells sure. and whatever. But if the <laughs> intent is to make as much money as possible and there's not a really good vibe with it, all of those crystals and everything else are just going to make it go whoosh, that much bigger. Right. 
So clear feeling, empathy is that. Sometimes okay. it's, you feel a little bit, some, it, it covers a diverse, and we can do three shows on this one alone. So okay. then you've got clairvoyance. Right. Clairvoyance is clear seeing. Most of us see out of the corner of our eyes. There was a shadow. Yes. There was a cat. There was a dog. There was a grandpa was in the shadow in the, in the corner of our eyes. That's perfectly normal. And men get it that way more than women. Oh. We'll see more color with it. Hmm. We'll see more vividness with it. And sometimes it's an actual vision. Now, hmm. clear audience, clear hearing, okay? Yeah. You clearly hear. You, If you're in a room and you hear whispers and there's nobody there but you. Mm-hmm. If you're in sort of between sleep and awake time, sometimes you can hear loved ones. Hmm. You might be in a car, and this happened to a friend of mine. She was a very religious lady going to church, didn't believe in intuition being anything good. And she was on the interstate. She heard, pull over, pull over. Wow. And then on the passenger side, she swore up and down. From then on, she was a believer in angels, intuition, something. Mm -hmm. She heard somebody yell at her, pull over now. Wow. Wow. And she pulled over. And just as she was getting off the interstate, she was putting the brakes on, getting off the interstate, her tire blew in the front. If she hadn't pulled over when she did, she'd have gone off the bridge. Oh, my. Now, the last one is claircognizance. Now, that has a tendency to not only be that gut feeling, you know that you know that you know, but it's all of the others combined. It can be some... Something you hear, something okay. that you see, something that you feel strongly right. about. Right. And they tend to all group together. And the, the more you get it, the more it's repetition, the stronger it is, the more you need okay. to pay attention. You're not hearing things, you're not seeing things, and all of this. So that's your intuition. Now, when it comes okay. to signs in your intuition, right? And this is so funny because I've actually written a class describing all of this. This is such a perfect timing. This is one of those you can't (laughs) make this. You cannot make this stuff up because I'm actually a friend of mine who's a wonderful lady. Uh, She's been a client. Now she's a friend and she's perfect for editing my book and my classes and the booklets. Mm -hmm. We're getting ready to do this. So signs. Let's go with signs. You brought up that in your intuition. Right. Everybody has intuition. Everybody. It might. But there are different levels, right? I mean, some people are more intuitive than others. Exactly. My my intuition, if you want to liken it to piano, piano playing, I love the piano. I can, I cannot do chopsticks right now. Haven't practiced in years. Okay. But somebody's over there playing at Carnegie Hall. The same thing with me and intuition or you and intuition. Right. Or somebody else. You've got people that play chopsticks. That's great. That's fine. If you want to bring it up to being able to play something else, fine in your intuition. Some people will walk out of the womb. And I'm going to say that none of us walk out of the womb, but you know what I mean, people. Right. right. We come out of the womb like me that you scare your parents, your brothers and sisters don't want to know what's going on. And you just stand there and they're going, she's doing it again or he's doing it again. (laughs) And it, it does. It can be very scary for people. Um, and it, it's signs, it's being open. And some of you may say, well, but I've been open and I've been needing it. And I, the need is the key word. Okay. The more you push, the more pressure there is, you got to have it. The more it will elude you. If dad is a carpenter, he will give you a hammer as a sign. He will give you a, um, it's okay. Papa. It's my cat people. One of them. <laughs> yes, dear. That's okay. If dad's an electrician, look for electrical signs, literally signs with something going wrong with your electricity, or you find wires everywhere. Why am I finding wires? Well, hello, dad was an electrician. My husband was an electrician. To make you all feel better, okay, just to make you all feel better. Now, I've been a professional medium for almost 20 years now. We're real close to that 20-year mark. And before there was the website, before there was all this other stuff. And for 
years, I feel like I wasn't getting the right signs from, I wasn't getting the signs my dad sent me the right way. I can talk to dead people. I can sense when something really big's going on, but I wasn't paying attention to the signs from dad because part of it was my religious upbringing. Okay. Mm-hmm. Part of it was, I didn't really get it that they were going to give it their way. It's not our way. It's okay. their way. And what cinched it for me, I started finding dimes. Hmm. And I kept hearing in my intuition, buddy, can you spare a dime? Well, my dad was a World War II um, Army private, but he was also okay. a survivor of the Great Depression. And buddy, can you spare a dime was one of those songs that they used to sing. It was on the, it was on what we used to call the wireless. It was a radio before there was other kinds of wireless. So I said, okay, dad, if this is you, I want you to put the next dime. So I cannot in any way, shape or form misunderstand if this is really you. And this has been happening for a couple months. And I was in my thirties, late thirties, early forties. Okay. It's been a while. <laughs> and um it was my late 30s because my oldest was moving into her first apartment okay so that's her freshman year of university my father was a carpenter we moved a lot when i was a kid so guess where dad put that dime dead mm-hmm. center square on a one by four part of a pallet in a u-haul at one of the u-haul shops in knoxville tennessee ah couldn't miss it it was there yeah. and the sun shone on it Bing! now that's working overtime for signs i will tell you right. that. that is working overtime i get roses sometimes when i'm really upset i get dimes i've even met, if you look on youtube you can find my dime video okay mm-hmm. from years ago oh. don't expect it has to be your way number okay. one hint it has to be it's their way Think of the Frank Sinatra song, I Did It My Way. Well, that's what they're going to do with the sign. Right. It could be music on the radio. I had a kitty that got hit and killed several months ago. I was trying to rehab. It was a barn cat that I was trying to rescue and rehab. And some people were doing some work and it caused him to be afraid. And he ran a quarter of a mile from where I was living and he was hit and killed on the main road. Mm. And I felt so bad. I felt like it was my fault. I hadn't gotten him. I hadn't got it. Da, 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 da. Well, like we all do. Sure. And it took three weeks. It took three weeks. And then on the side of a van and it said, Jojo's mama. I kid you not. And I just, I, it, it was an out of town van where I'm living now in, in North Carolina. It was way out of town. And it said on the side of it, it was Jojo's mama, something or other. And I went, Oh my God, that was Jojo. Mm. And I could relax. The second thing is relax. You're hurting. You've lost someone you love. There's not much more in this world painful, whether it's a fast trauma, heart attack, car accident, shooting, something that's fast and traumatic, or you're watching a loved one die through cancer or an illness that is chronic to terminal. Right. It hurts. There's no getting out of that. And relax. It doesn't mean they don't love you. It doesn't mean that they're not there for you. It doesn't mean that they're not whatever. It simply means that they may be taking a little time to let you heal a little bit more. Hmm. Okay. You have the opportunity to explore in your healing the modalities and ways that they can communicate with you. And please understand, even though time and space really don't make any difference to us when we're doing readings and stuff, because a reading, you can feel like it's gone in two minutes and it's been an hour and 10 or whatever. Right. They're also learning to communicate without being able to tap your shoulder and go, Hey, honey, could you pass me that thing that's in front of you right there? Yeah, that one. I need, yeah, that fork. Okay, yeah, please, yeah. Don't overthink it. Number three. So they're learning. I'm sorry for interrupting. Hey, oh, I'm sorry. Number number three is they're learning how to communicate without a mouth. That that's a huge that's a huge concept for me. 
to wrap my head around. They have died. They are now spirits. Mm -hmm. But they have to learn as well. Yes. We don't come out wow. of either we don't come out of the <laughs> womb knowing everything. We we don't. And when you cross over, you're learning how to communicate again, because I do believe in reincarnation. We're learning how to communicate again without using a mouth, without being able to tap you on the shoulder, without being wow. able to pick up the cell phone and go, hey, honey, yeah, I'm out in the garage. Can you get me a peanut butter and jelly sandwich? I'm starving, but I don't want to get out from under the car. They're That's going to gonna that. be spinning in my head for days now. I like it. I like wow. it. But I just, you know, something I would never think of. Thank you. You're welcome. And a lot of times you have to be in a place where you can breathe and relax and go, okay, putting time pressure on yourself, let alone them, is not fair to you and it's not fair to them. It right. really isn't. I've had people in my practice go, well, I've never gotten a sign from my husband and I don't know, no, 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 no. And there was one lady, she was really cranky about it. That's why she wanted the reading to make sure he was okay. Right. And he was on the other side, leaned against my, my door casing. I'll never forget. He, he had a lean build, not super tall, but it was a lean build. And he's laughing. He goes, tell her why the heck all the lamps aren't working. <laughs> She'd spent $2,000 with an electrician having the house checked out, the lamps not working. And she, she was adamant she'd never gotten a sign. I said, okay, is this? And I said, am I correct in saying he's not super tall, but he has a lean build and he's got an awful sense of awfully great sense of humor. And she goes, yes. And yes. And he says, well, to tell you, what about all the lamps and the electrician's bill? And she said, that was him? And I said, he was an electrician, yeah. Oh, my. Oh, my. So it's not our way. It's their way. And right. he had been. You know, you said something before we started recording. Cardinal flying past your window may not be a right. sign. If you live in an area, cardinals, hawks, owls aren't common. It's a sign. Mm-hmm. If they stay around for a little bit, it's a sign. Mm -hmm. It's what you feel deeply. Birds are really right. signs from spirit. And that's spirit with a big S and spirit with a little S. Okay. What's the difference? Spirit with a big S is God. Spirit okay. with a little S is okay. spirit, folks. Our Thank relatives, you. our loved ones. You're welcome, hon. So don't blame your intuition that you're not getting signs. You're not intuitive enough you're not it's the same thing as saying i'm not smart enough well yeah you are but it just might not be the right time if they've been gone two weeks two months and sometimes even 20 years i have a friend up in new york she did not and she is a good medium she did not hear from her mother for over 20 years because the pain was so hard yeah it wasn't until she was a practicing medium that she could understand more of the scope of things. Because when you lose your mama at a young age, when you're a young girl, you mm -hmm. need that woman. Sure. And she did. And it took over 20 years. It took her getting to a point where she could understand more of the spirit world and get mm -hmm. rid of the anger. And that's another thing. If you're angry, if you're hurting, if you're upset, if the, the lower energies, the ones that are more primal, that will block it. So it took her over 20 years. And, um, it's don't give up on them. I'm hearing that for somebody specifically. Don't give up on them. Okay. And I'm hearing an old song, BJ Thomas song. I think it is. Don't give mm -hmm. up on us, baby. Yep. Okay. If the person liked cats and all of a sudden you're walking around and you're seeing all these cat pictures or they're coming up on your a screen from your media sources and you're seeing cats everywhere well hello if you get a funny song on the radio okay now this is me my first love passed away from being hit and killed mm. just before covid hit that was a fun year for everybody oh, um dear. could we delete 2020 thank you um yes so he was hit and killed in january just before his 55th birthday mm. the other day 
I'm in the grocery store and I was going down the aisle and there was just two cashiers and we've all had that issue where there's a long line, two cashiers and, and this is where we're living now. Right. And I look up from my produce, double checking, I've got everything I need because I don't want to go out again. Mm -hmm. And I look up, this man could have been his son, dead ringer. It's that doppelganger. That's where they were. Oh, word yeah. From. And then on the on the Muzak that they're playing in the store is a 1980s song about everywhere you turn, there you are. Mm. And I said, oh, that's funny, George. That's really funny. You got it. Okay. I know it's you. <laughs> yeah. So they work in really weird ways. I never would have expected it. I wasn't pressured for it. Um, I knew he was okay. I've got a little bit of an edge because I can sort of tune in and ask my guides. I don't necessarily right. ask the person directly. I right. ask my guides, just everything good. Yep. Okay. We're good. Mm -hmm. You guys can do that too, though. Okay. And this is another part of the intuition. You each have guides, you have guardian angels, and you have overall angels. You do not have to be on your knees with some sort of anything in your hand to talk to them. Just talk to them like you would me or Kathy here or Stephanie or your best friend. Just talk to them. You don't have to know their names. Don't get hung up on what is their name for years. I got emails. I don't know their names. How do I talk to them? Do I have to light candles, say a certain prayer? Y'all? So these are not people that you used to know not necessarily no sometimes okay. on a rare occasion they will be but okay. these are we have a guardian angel that has never been incarnated into a human being that is there from the time we are born until the time we die we have mm -hmm. other angels that come in and out sometimes we have two guardian angels i think sometimes from the things that have happened in my life i must have a whole pack <laughs> sometimes um, we need them <laughs> <laughs> they fly hard and fast yeah. And um, we have guides, which can be ancestors. Okay. They can be people whom we've known in past lives. They can be general people that are assigned to us because they have a vantage point on understanding situations in our lives. And sometimes they go in and out. Sometimes you don't have the same crew you started with when, when you're a munchkin as you do when you pass over. Mm -hmm. They know they are there to help. The word guide is to guide. Don't make it harder than you have to okay. keep it sweet and simple. Mm -hmm. Just talk to them. They cannot make your decisions for you. There's a huge caveat that a lot of people don't right. understand, but they can guide mm -hmm. you. Okay. They can put little blockades up. If you're supposed to go right instead of left, they will tell you. Mm -hmm. And you don't have to be super intuitive. It's just a communication sort of like you and I, Kathy. Mm -hmm. We've gotten to know each other, other a little yep. bit over the last few months. And the more we talk and the more we do shows and the more everything, the more we get to know each other. Sure. Okay. The same with your guides. The more you talk to them, the more you talk to your angels, the easier it is the more you know about each other. They're watching you. It's more like the more you get to know about them, but because they know mm -hmm. everything there is about you. Mm -hmm. Right. But you get to know them more. It wasn't until, I want to say, about eight years ago that I never, I never had pushed my guides for their names. It was about eight years ago. It was after my, hmm. my late Michael passed. And um, I was talking to my ex-boyfriend I had one <laughs> in the last 12 years and um, <laughs> let's not go there and say we did okay nope. <laughs> and um because I got a chuckle on that one but I received all of a sudden I'd been talking to him signed off and I received two names and they could be as polar opposite as you could get I have a lady named Antoinette She's French. She is from the era that you would think of historically as just prior to the Louis sixteenth, okay. okay, around Louis fourteenth, and then I've got who I call Sarge, World War One sergeant, British wow. World War One sergeant. Hmm. 
Yes, that's right, Dib Dib. And <laughs> um, that's two of them. I don't ask them the names. They volunteered it. Mm -hmm. They've given me a little history of themselves. And it honestly, it honestly helps me to understand some of the penchants I've had for history. It was their influence because they know certain things that I need to know. So it goes there. And Antoinette's quite helpful when I'm giving a reading and someone's uh, French or Canadian French or what have you. And um, occasionally she'll step in and she'll say, no, it's, it's this word. And she'll show me the word and she'll pronounce it in my ear. So I hear it better. It's a little weird thing, but hey. I learned so much when you and I chat. And I know you've mentioned the guardian angels and everything before. But sometimes, you know, it takes a few instances of mm -hmm. hearing it in my head for it to really register. But the entire concept of spirits having to learn to communicate with us is just gobsmacked me today. So, <laughs> Okay, um, so when, can wanna... you think about it for just a second, if you would think about it. We all now know how, to, and you've seen some videos, we now know how to use these iPhones, flip phones, what have you. Yes. Okay. Think of it as going back to having to use a rotary phone. Oh, yeah. 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 It, I mean, it makes sense, but it's just something that, you know, I hadn't, I guess I hadn't quite gotten there yet. But I, I want to kind of wrap up for people because as always, when you and I chat, the time just flies by, mm -hmm. literally flies by. So for people that are upset or anxious about wanting to have some signs from their departed, but haven't yet. They need to try to gear themselves to become more open. And they can do that by relaxing, by being, by allowing themselves to heal a little bit more mm -hmm. so that they themselves can be more ready, more, more ready for signs and everything. But also consider the things that you are seeing. Maybe there are signs, but you're missing them. Mm -hmm. Maybe you're expecting that cardinal or that butterfly to come land on your shoulder. But it might not, that might not be the sign. So I guess what I want to say is take heart. Don't despair. Keep moving forward in your grief journey. Now, Ada May is available as our other psychic mediums. Just, I would personally ask you to be cautious. Uh, I have heard from people that have contacted Ada May and had readings done and were very, very, very satisfied. So I know from having checked references and everything as well, that Ada May is a great medium if you want to reach out to someone. And she's going to tell you in just a minute how you can reach her. But Please, I guess the message I want to say is don't get so wrapped up in not seeing, identifying, or noticing signs. Just try to take care of yourself and keep moving forward and allow yourself to be more open. Look a little closer around you. Look for those things that remind you of the person that you love that is no longer with you. And it likely will come to pass that the signs will be there. Is that fair to say, Ada? Oh, very much so. Very, okay. very, very much so. Good. Everything's good. spot on there. Good. So as we wrap up today, and I always hate this part because, you know, we have to say goodbye. But then I always get excited about the next episode. So it all works out. But Ada, I want to give you just a minute to let our listeners know how they can reach you, uh, what to expect when they do reach out to you, and the, ser the other services that you might offer them as well. Oh, Kathy, thank you for having me on. Thank you for you and, and Stephanie and, and just having me on. Mm -hmm. I'm a psychic medium, as we've discussed, and thank you very much for the overview that, and review. That's wonderful of you. You can reach me by my website, which is naturallistening.com, or... You can reach me on Facebook, and that is Natural Listening with Psychic Medium Ada Mae Brown. And I call it Natural Listening because this is listening to the most basic part of yourself, your connection with spirit, your connection with God, that spirit with the big S. Please take good care of yourself. Eat some extra berries. Take extra sleep. Don't just 
push, try to push through and not hurt. It does hurt. And I've gone through it a lot in my life. You can't circumvent it. You just have to work with the waves. Think of it like you're walking on the beach. Some days the grief hits you and it's a, it's a rip current and it tugs you out. And the other days it just tickles your ankles. Mm -hmm. That's one way you can look at it. But do That's eat right. well. Give yourself some extra rest. Play with your fur kids if you have fur kids. Go and see the grandkids if you can or the kids or whatever. But take some time for you. Okay? It's not an easy process. And again, you can reach me in those two ways, naturallistening.com or Natural Listening with Psychic Medium Ada Mae Brown on Facebook. And I will be uh, starting a class, I'm hoping the 1st of June. So if you're interested in learning more about your intuition, there'll be a couple of classes to choose from. My website has something up right now. Do not hit go with that. It is going to be changing around. We're under construction. Thank you, guys. Blessings. All right. Thanks again, Ada May. Um, I look forward to our next chat. And who knows what we'll talk about at that point in time. To our listeners out there, thank you again for choosing to spend your last half hour or so with us. We do appreciate it. Stephanie and I love what we do. Stephanie's not with us today as she wasn't feeling very well. So like we ask you to do, she's taking care of herself. She's listening to her body and she's resting. And taking care of herself. And that's what we want y'all to do as well. Take care of yourselves. We're all kind of stuck in this grief. And there's no way out. But straight ahead. So keep moving forward. And we'll catch you again next week. As we all continue to live in grief. Thank you so much for listening with us today. Do you have a topic that you'd like us to cover? Or do you have a question from one of our episodes? please email us at info at as I live in grieve.com and let us know. We hope you will find a moment to leave a review, send an email and share with others. Join us next time as we continue to live and grieve together.